Guðni is a really talented athlete overall. So he's been, uh, you know, almost doing anything and, and, you know, a very promising golfer. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I just noticed him when he was very young and saw this talent and I approached him and asked if he wanted to throw. Welcome, and uh, thank you so much for taking the time, you guys, to set up the interview. I have Goodney, and I have to say Valor Goodnison, right? Did I yeah. say it right? And then Peter. Uh, pretty right. <clears throat> okay. And then Peter, Peter Goodmundson, right? Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So I, when, I was, when I was in Iceland, I learned, right, I guess Icelandic is kind of a Germanic language. And so it, and it is definitely a tough language. <laughs> I, I, so basically, welcome. And let's start it off with saying uh, congratulations on setting the Icelandic national record, a 30-year record, obviously held by legendary uh vestin hefsteinson um and hopefully i said that relatively well <laughs> um, <good. laughs> uh, and obviously he's become you know arguably maybe one you know the greatest discus coach of all time with obviously what he's done with gerd Cantor and daniel stahl and simon peterson and the swedish throw success and everything else um so how did uh, to kick things off and kind of talk about that i always like to start you know you you did that you were only 24 years old which is a massive throw um and how you know what what did that lead up to like what was the conditions you set that at home there in Reykjavik right um yeah. so yeah go ahead and let me yeah, know how uh, <clears throat> the, the uh, 2020 was pretty uh, bad year for me except the Icelandic record of course right <laughs> Uh, it started off, uh, we were training outside in the snow and in the rain just all the time, always around uh, freezing temperatures. And I ended up uh, injuring my groin, if I remember correctly. And it was, uh, I was injured mostly the whole summer. Oh, wow. So I couldn't do a lot. And okay. then when I finally like could throw, I mean, we tried competing a lot and I wasn't throwing that well. Like most part of the summer okay then i just uh, maybe what do you call it just two days before the Icelandic record it finally like everything clicked together like my lower body was finally a little bit ahead of the upper body and that was like connecting on the throws i thought i had a terrible practice but then seeing the marks day after uh, two days later i was like okay maybe it was a really good practice maybe like i was throwing probably constantly around 63 four meters in just in the call that's really good for me in the practice since i usually just throw around 59 meters all the time always and okay. i've been doing that for the last <laughs> like six years or so <laughs> okay <laughs> And yeah, and then just two, uh, what do you call it? Uh, two days later, it was a Wednesday, if I remember correctly. Uh, Peter asked, asked me if we should uh, have the meet. He asked me at like 10 in the morning, I think, because it was like raining and like, the wind was blowing. It was, wasn't was like exactly the correct uh, like wind direction for our you know, disco circles. Mm -hmm. But, but I was, I was feeling good and I, I just said, yes, I was like hyped up for the meet and I started, I'm in college during, doing sports science and I had a basketball class. So I warmed up a little bit doing basketball. Okay. And then I went straight to the, what do you call it? Field, mm -hmm. just warmed up a little bit. The wind was blowing straight from the right. Okay. Mm, but we also had like. We have really tall trees, okay. the, like a whole right side where we are throwing. So inside of the circle and maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe eight meters off the ground. It was kind of cold. It's like no wind because of the wind, the, the trees were blocking it. So you have to like throw it really high 
and far. So, <laughs> so when did anything because I was the only one that did well in this competition. We were like five, six people throwing, I think so. Okay. Or seven, I'm not sure, but it's like it's like the wind didn't help you anything except maybe at the 55 or 60 meter mark. Uh -huh. I, I'm not sure, but okay. it looks like that on the video. Right. But I mean, yeah, I had been throwing pretty, or I felt like I was throwing pretty bad, like during the last weeks before the Icelandic record, and okay. and the meet started off well. I threw, I think, I threw sixty something in the beginning, maybe sixty five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Opened up with a little bit less. I think sixty one or two. I was really happy with that. And then I threw 61.5, something I don't remember correctly. A little a bit. PR. It was yeah. PR, yeah. It was okay. a little bit better than my mm -hmm. old PR. And then in my second last throw, it's just like everything just hit. I just like, I was really white in the release to the right, just like could push it really far out. The grip was perfect. And it just, it just went really far. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah it's like i couldn't even see how far it went it's like it was super far and and this was my fifth throw and my sixth throw that was that was not shorter i think it's just it was a really bad throw but the wind just took it just ridiculously far and way out of sector and i felt mm. it it was so it didn't even measure it it was probably around 69 or more but we don't know it, it doesn't matter I, okay i'm really happy with 69 35 yeah especially after the whole season <laughs> right so <laughs> kind of crap <laughs> and then just three days later you threw an, another 65 51 and yeah. and so coach you obviously so from the coach's standpoint, um, you know, you decide, hey, you want to throw in a meet and you kind of just impromptu. How do you like, obviously you could see he's throwing well. So you say, hey, let's let's get a meet. And here, he, you know, he's going to class, comes out, jumps in, throws 69 meters. So how, how did you as the coach like, you know, what's how, how was the preparation and 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 how is it? You know what are you doing at that point when you see he's on and how are you you know coaching him through the meet so that he just continues to go and hits a, a massive throw well um like like Winnie said it had been a problematic summer mm -hmm. but i felt that he, it was coming together and uh and on that big day uh, the the difference between him and the other throwers was that his mindset was I'm going to throw far today. I'm not going to let the weather inf infect me at all. Mm -hmm. So, so he managed to, he managed to, you know, get full speed through the, through the throw. Ob obviously this is his fastest throw mm -hmm. ever. And, uh, and uh, yeah, what I, what I try to do is, just to create opportunities and always stay positive. Right. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a, I think that's the biggest quality a coach has to have. That's great opportunities uh, and, and, and build up the athlete. Right. Yeah. Now, like we talked about before we started the introduction, um, you are a two-time Olympian, um, 21-26 PR in the shot. Is that the Icelandic record in the shot? Yes, it I, is. I was I was going to say I have to believe that's yeah. the, that's a that's a big throw, so you know congratulations on that as well. Um, Thanks. And obviously, you know how did you how did you guys connect, and when did you have you been coaching him the whole his whole career? Yes, in uh, uh, yes in discus. Uh, Guðni is a really talented athlete overall, so he's been, uh, you know, almost doing anything, and, and you know, a very promising golfer. Oh wow! <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just noticed him when he was very young, and saw this talent, and I approached him and asked if he wanted to throw, and and he was willing to do that, and so he joined my team, and and 
yeah, rest is history. We, he, the thing with Guðni is he is he is willing one hundred and ten percent to be the you know become the best in the world. So he's very coachable. So it, my job is rather easy, you know, just be there, you know, be the be the the extra eye for him to correct mm -hmm. positions, direct him when, when I need to. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the thing with him is he's very quick to adopt. Very cool. And and try we we try a lot of things and talk about it. Mm. And then we decide to use it or not. Gotcha. Yeah. And you know, I, I feel like that's a, that's um, uh, I, I've mm -hmm. talked to, you know, a number of other, you know, European throwers and whatnot. And I know you guys, I don't know if there's a, I know it's Scandinavia is Iceland. So I don't know if, you know, I got to make sure mm -hmm. I'm you know, saying that right. But uh, I noticed with some other European throwers that I've talked to, it's very common for, this kind of scenario, you start with an athlete at a young age, whereas here in the United States, right, I've, I've been fortunate to, to coach some very talented athletes, and I'm building a really great, you know, technical base, and then they go somewhere, and they get a new coach, and then the training's yeah. changing, and then they change the technique, you know, mm -hmm. and that's happened, I think, unfortunately, I've had some, you know, some pretty talented athletes that have had some big, big distances, and then they're starting to make technical changes in my mind is why would you make a lot of technical changes to continue to refine experiment? And I really like what you said about that. You know, I think that's the key. Um, so how one question I have is uh, how old was he when you found him? Like what age was, because I saw this first, like on world athletics, right? Your first, your first year, I think you, it shows that you threw 63, 50, Right. And you were 19. Is that right? Do I have that right? Which is, yeah, a big, which is, a, and that was that your first year? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. It was, uh, I started doing discus like late 2014. Okay. Then I had been doing a shot for a little bit. I'm not sure. Maybe a year. One maybe year. Peter, yeah. One yeah. year. I was trying to qualify for, I think it was Youth Worlds at Eugene. Okay. I didn't make it uh, in shot put. Okay. I would have probably made it. In, I would have made it in discus though, but I <laughs> wasn't in discus yet. But uh, yeah, I started a year earlier in discus, trained a little bit, like did the switch, trained, the, trained more discus during the winter. And then like during the summer, I just like, I PR just in almost every competition. It was uh, really fun. <laughs> right yeah and yeah. i ended up with 63.50 and that's like that was a five meter pr at the time but i had had like maybe five meets in a row that i had thrown over 60 in warm-up or out of sector so mm. okay <laughs> and so so now how let me let me know a couple of stats on you how tall are you and then how uh, much how much do you weigh I'm 199 centimeters tall. That's like six, six and a half. Okay, yeah. I think so. And okay. I'm right now, I'm around 148 uh, pounds, no kilos. Oh, kilos, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the skinniest discus thrower in the world. <laughs> yeah, the looks are deceiving. <laughs> so, no, but we are trying to lose a little bit of weight to. Okay. Move around a little bit better. This, this is a pretty heavy. So, so coach, I'm assuming when you see him uh, in back in 2014, he's a big, big guy. And are you thinking right away he's going to be a shot putter? Well, due to my background, I, I tend to have all athletes try the shot first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I figured as much, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. um, and it was it was coming along nicely but then uh, we i had the, the whole throwing team in, in training camp in uh, portugal okay and i I, I was having all of them do discus okay just you know like a line over the field and everybody had a discus everybody throw at the same time uh like for kids mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and 
I had I had a couple of discus throwers there, uh, but Guðni was throwing further than them. <laughs> so, you know, from a stand throw. So right. I right away saw that he had incredible touch on the discus. Okay. So that, that was no question about it. We had to we had to go for the discus. That's really cool. Yeah. And, and so when you start develop him, obviously he he s- seems like it's pretty much a natural. I think if you throw <laughs> 63 okay. meters within basically from a little over a year, maybe, or two seasons from when you started, that's, yeah. uh, that's pretty, ex- in, it, that's a uh, it, very impressive to say the least. Um, so again, as the coach and you have the opportunity, which I said, I, I kind of got a little sidetrack, but the point is, is I'd see the European or this, you know, Scandinavian model seems to be like you get the coach and you're pretty much, going to get that opportunity to develop and here like you said i think in the states you yeah. see you're going to go which could be argued it's interesting we've we, obviously the united states is absolutely insane with the number of mm-hmm. world rank shot putters right i mean yeah. our, our shot putters are insane our yeah. discus throwers however we've had a lot of talented guys but we just haven't had the same type of luck, you know, or success on the international stage. We of course have had greats, but in the last 20 years we've, and we've had very good throwers and, and, but we haven't had like that kind of domination that you would see. Do you, from your guys' perspective, what do you see? Is there a big difference between what you see from like the European Scandinavian discus, you know, model versus the American model. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. Uh, of course, your shot putters are always so impressive. Um, maybe they are just taking most of the. Talented throwers. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it, I, it, you know, I tell you, I've had a couple of, I've had multiple kids that I coach with the, the 5.45, right? I, at the, so the 12 pound shot. And I've had two, I, I've had a 22 meter kid, a 2186 kid, and a 21, uh, like 26 thrower. Mm-hmm. So I had, you know, and I had all those guys within like a five year span. Have it's very fortunate to find the talent to be able to do that, but you know, um, and all of them were good discus throwers too. Uh, but they all once they became good at the shot, they 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 wanted to throw the shot all the time. So, um, do you think that the the discus is technically harder than the shot? No, I don't think so. Uh, what I think is uh, shot put has more opportunities because it's an indoor sport also. Mm, okay. So you, ha- you have more, you know, challenges and competitions. Right. So I think, I think it's more fun to be there. Yeah. Um, you don't know, have I to think, walk I as think, far. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, all of these, these throws, uh, javelin, hammer, they, they all need a lot of technique and and determination to be good so uh, it's it's I, I don't think it's right to say one is dif- more difficult than the other mm. um i think just in, in like 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 in goodness setting he uh, he he is a very talented athlete he wants to be good he comes from a strong supporting family he he's in a in a strong uh, club with many good coaches. He's a student. He doesn't have to change anything to uh, to you know improve mm-hmm. still you know. So I think this is this is one one thing that really is strong here, especially you know for him. Mm-hmm. I don't know. For, like I, I met this uh, there was this uh, Dutch shot putter here. Uh, Sven, uh, his last name, Yeah. Sven he, 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 he com- uh, commutes uh, two two hours every day to his coach. Oh wow! Yeah, that, that's that's a lot of sacrifice. Yeah, for sure. You know, two hours to go there and two hours back. Right. So, 
So I think, uh, you know, the, the setting, the, the way things are here, especially, you know, for Guðni right now, it's, it's just good. That's cool. Okay. So let's ask you about, um, obviously, going into um, in, in 2021, how was, like, the year? You opened up, you know, uh, when I see something like 56 when you open up, I don't know if you were injured or is it raining? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's Reykjavik, right? It's Iceland. It rains all the time. So, you know, I would imagine c- competing in less than optimal conditions in your, in, in Iceland has got to be kind of a norm, right? Like you're always going to have something. It can change fast. And yeah. So, so you open up and then that was it. I mean, you went on and most of the season at that point, you jumped up, your next meet was like 63 meters, you know? So what, what goes through, like what happened in, in like I said, you, your next meet is just a, you know, a month later and you're over in Croatia and I'm imagining the weather's much better in, in April and Croatia than April in Iceland. <laughs> yeah, it was just, uh, it was pretty cold in Iceland. I think this was my, if it wasn't just my first time throwing outdoors, I'm not even sure. It was one of my it first times throwing was, outdoors. Yeah. 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 And yeah. we were just having having fun. And uh, it was supposed to be fun, at least. <laughs> I, re- I remember I you wanted to you wanted to, you know, scratch that uh throw, and I said, no, stay in. You will throw further, but he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> So what, you know, as the coach, when you see, what, what do you do, like, advice-wise when he just has an off meet? And is, and is his, and, you know, Guna, is your, you feel like no big deal? Uh, you know, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you approach it? I know sometimes throwers can get, right, like, oh, and then they start to stress out. And when, you know, sometimes, I mean, a bad meet just happens. Or maybe you had better throws, but you fouled them or whatever. And that's, you know, never what you can see behind a final result. I mean, it's irritating to have a bad meet, but <laughs> but I mean, I was I trained golf for ten years, and that uh, it made me pretty calm about my about it just about everything. It's like we can't go break clubs after one bad shot. Or what right. what about a one whole bad day? But it will just come another day where you throw further or something. Maybe you can be pissed off in a little bit, but right. It's, there's no reason to like ruin a whole weekend or a whole week of, uh, over it. Right. <laughs> yeah, what I, what I say to my athletes is you, you, you have to have a, a ton of bad throws to be able to have a few good throws. Mm-hmm. Or at least few perfect throws. <laughs> so, yeah. so you have to be able to, you know, to cope with it. It's... Uh, of course, it's irritating, like Gwyneth says, but this is just how it is. Right. Yeah. Now, now I notice again, ver- really quickly, you know, it looks like the very early part of the season was, uh, you know, s- starts really strong. You just kind of keep building. You get a 65-39. Um, and I, was that the meet? I'm trying to think. Was that, uh, I, I'm assuming in Vaxo, you're throwing against Daniel and Simone and, you know, those guys. And, and I think, isn't that yeah. the meet that Simone went? Uh, did he go? I was trying to think of when he went 69 meters. Was that I the meet? I think he went 69 meters then. Is that the one? And I think he beat Daniel, right? Yeah. He yeah. He beat Daniel. It's the only uh, competition right. Daniel lost last year. Right. But he, he had some pretty big uh, foul throws. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so like around 73, 74, 73, 60 or something. Okay. Okay. So I mean Daniel can throw far. Yeah, <laughs> Everybody for knows sure. that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And and so it's talk about like so how did the rest of the year go? I I, I noticed um, you know, you're competing again and you're pre- preparing for Tokyo, and there's still a lot of right. I, I you know, from your guys' end, I know from here we were even hearing you know, weeks before Tokyo, like they were considering potentially, you know, canceling stuff. Did you guys ever hear that? Or like, did you have that concern at all going into going to Tokyo? Uh, No, 
not me at least. Uh, I always thought they they were always going to have the games because it's going to be probably just a financial disaster if they're not going to have it. <laughs> Very and, true. I mean, it, yeah, I don't know. I always thought they were going to have it, uh, especially in 2021. I mean, I, I thought they would not postpone it from 2020, but right. I always thought they were going to have it in 2021 after one postponed. Gotcha. But I don't know. And what do yeah, you think? My, my biggest concern was, you know, not not having Guðni, you know, getting the virus. Right. So he, he so he wouldn't, you know, go. I went from Iceland for a training camp in Tenerife in beginning of April because everything was closing down in Iceland. Mm -hmm. And our training facility, they were going to close that for six or seven weeks because they had a computer tournament. Mm. A League of Legends tournament, so oh, wow. they decided to close down the facility for seven weeks. That's a pretty weird decision, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went, yeah, I was in Tenerife for four weeks. I went straight from Tenerife to Croatia. Uh, I was in Croatia for, I'm not even, uh, maybe almost two weeks. Mm. No, I think I was there in two weeks. I went yeah. from Croatia to Vaxia. I was there for two weeks, I think. I'm okay. not even sure. And it was all because if I came back home, I had to do like five day quarantine. Ah, okay. So I was always trying to stay as long as possible uh, <laughs> without coming home. And then I had to come home for Icelandic championships in the like second week, weekend of June. And that's like, I was on a like steady going upwards. I threw 65, 30, mm -hmm. something. 39. Yeah. I think it was <laughs> yeah. 65, 39. Yeah. Yeah. And then we went to Go Gothenburg through for the Gothenburg Grand Prix. And I threw 64, 90. And that was in just a complete calm. I was just really warm. It was a fun competition. And then I thought everything was like coming. I was like throwing far, there's no wind, just just me throwing far. Mm -hmm. And then I came home, uh, did my quarantine and just like, I didn't find the like, the touch after that. I mean, mm -hmm. I threw some big throws, but never in, never in the meat itself. Like it was in warm up, like right. at the, I had a really big warm up at uh, the Nationals. Uh, yeah, very big. It was. I'm not. It was. I'm not sure how far it was. It was really far, but uh, I think it was close to 69. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But it was just some some uh, misunderstanding with uh, laser equipment, mm. like uh, we're used to after well last week competition. Yeah, the the Milrose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So after three throws in, I mean, it was one degree, so it was really cold too. Oh, wow. Uh, after three throws, uh, it took hour to throw three throws. So it was extremely oh, wow. long competition. So you we were just really cold trying to stay loose. And it, it's just pretty hard, mm -hmm. especially when you're getting big and stiff and <laughs> not 20 anymore. <laughs> yeah. You're an old guy now at 25. Huh? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So as you guys, the, you know, the rest of the season, um, talk about you obviously went to the games and you obviously didn't have the games you were hoping to have. And I know that's probably, you know, but I, I wanted to just kind of ask you guys, you know, because these things happen. I, I've obviously, you know, as a, as a coach, in my experiences, you get guys and, you know, sometimes there's a, one of my friends who's a mentor and a coach always said, you know, bad day to have a bad day right you know yeah. and it just but it happens sometimes but so what 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 was there was there anything or was it just an off day was there like an injury or you know uh, i had been dealing with a groin injury and i have been dealing with a little bit of groin injury for the last well, since 2019 okay so like i got sick sick in 2018 december mm -hmm. uh, i had to, they had to remove my appendix mm -hmm. okay and 
during the surgery, they messed something up and I got the peritonitis mm. from the surgery. So it was just like my appendix had blown and everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Gotcha. <laughs> so the surgery almost didn't do anything. <laughs> got it. That's, that's a bummer. He was so in intensive care for a while. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it, I lost like 16 kilos in, in just three weeks. It, it, it's amazing what you can lose if you just don't eat anything. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it, it came really, it came back quickly and also the strength. But just after this, I've been dealing with some mm -hmm. weird groin injuries. I've been having like mini strax fracture in my pubis bone mm, okay and i rub, ruptured my pubis ligament too somehow okay i don't know how though but it happened and i've been dealing with a little bit of like groin problems like now and then like mm. and just right now there i haven't felt uh, anything in my groin since okay. probably just around olympics but yeah, but yeah, it was just a bad day, 2021 in the Olympics. Uh, I had been throwing pretty well in the world, uh, what do you call it, in the training camp before the Olympics. Okay. I was throwing pretty well, or I thought so, at least. And it was just a bad day, I would say. Yeah. So coach, how does that, how did it, how were things leading up? And then, you know, as the coach, how is it on your end when that, situation happens well it's of course very hard to to uh, take right uh, it, of course it's a lot harder for him of course right I always had to remind me of that but i was i was pretty disappointed because everything was was going quite well mm -hmm. the warm-up was good um but I think I think after you know thinking afterwards, I think uh, the season had been just too long. Okay. Uh, the COVID problems. We only had to be away from Iceland for so many weeks. Right. Traveling. Yeah. Uh, it took a lot of toll, and that was that was just it. It was just somehow an end point there. Gotcha. Um, so so. It just did not click mm. what he was trying to do. Right. And uh, and I was just there in the stands and had no answers. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I can, I can imagine. And, you know, you, you, when you were mentioned that earlier and you had to be on the road because of, uh, you know, five-day quarantine upon return and kind of staying out, I would imagine at a certain point, it's one thing to write to kind of even mentally know you're going to go somewhere, do a training camp for – however many weeks and know you're going to kind of return home. Right. But then when you're yeah. kind of perpetually on the road, you're not in your bed, you're not eating kind of the way, not as normally as you might eat. I would think, you know, when you're, you're traveling that hard, that definitely would take a toll. So, um, so on that note, um, I wanted to ask you guys on training. And I think that's pretty like when you guys live in a, a, a cold climate, it's it seems pretty. I see this with most European throwers as well. You guys all leave like I've seen, um, you know, the Swedish guys, they would come out to the States a lot. We'll see them out at Chula Vista and they'll do, you know, they'll be out for a training camp for like four weeks or something. And, you know, the weather's, you know, just fantastic. The conditions are always good. Um, how many training camps a year do you guys tend to do? And then like, what's a training, what's the training cycle look like for you guys? When do you guys start training September? Do you, you know, what, when do you take off? When do you start? And then, and then how many training camps do you get kind of preseason? Well, actually we, we don't go that often since Gwyn is in school. Okay. He, we only we only can use like Christmas time and then Easter time mm, okay. for training camps. Okay, and then we go to the Winter Cup throwing competition, and we try to use get few extra days there. That's in March. Okay, so 
So, and then uh, we tried to do something early spring. Okay. Somewhere. Gotcha. Um, usually related to a competition. Gotcha. So it, uh, it, it can be in Holland or, or Sweden or, or Portugal. Okay. So, uh, so as it is now, it's not so many training camps every year. Okay. Um, it was the first yeah, time yeah. now we went during the Christmas. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think I saw, where did you go again? I had seen that on, I think, your went Instagram. To, uh, went to Tenerife, to the northern part of Tenerife. That's okay. really nice for uh, throwers. Okay. But when it comes to um, your throwing technique, what, how, you know, what, are, what is kind of the general, you know, technical approach? Like what would be, I, I always see, you know, and coach, I'm not sh sure if you're familiar with kind of like my six pillars, I kind of break the throw down. It's a teaching system. And I was explaining, right. We have a lack of, you know, coaches, but um, I'm big on, you know, you have to, the start to me is, is massively important to the throw because it's just going to dictate if it's on, everything's going to kind of fall into place easier. If it's off, you're off balance, your orbit's affected, you know, you're going to, and you're just working at a less optimal, you know, point. So yeah, I totally agree with that. The start is everything. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I, yeah. That's great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so what do you guys like, what are some of the key things that you like to do? And I know when I interview a lot of athletes and coaches, sometimes, you know, I get it that like, when you're starting to compete on a, you know, you're, you're competing at the highest level. So sometimes you don't want to like, you know, give away what you think maybe are your little, uh, you know, advantages or insights, but generally, you know, what would be some of the kind of the main technical things like you had said earlier when you were talking about your throw, you know, coach, you said he was fast, right. And clearly that's the key, like bigger distances, the more on balance and the more speed is going to translate to bigger throws. Um, and then you said, goodness, you said you talked about the grip and that's like such a huge thing that I think especially young throwers don't understand. Like, and in like, you know, coaches saying you started, picked it up right away. And that's something that that's usually, I always say is the big indicator for a, for a discus thrower. So you've got speed, you guys talked about grip. And then you said you really got your lower body ahead and you felt a nice long pull. So how do you guys kind of approach things? Cause there's a lot of stuff obviously in those quick comments you guys made, but how do you guys generally go out and, you know, how do you look at your technique and what do you, you know, what are the things, how, when you're trying to get the lower body ahead, obviously I think that starts in the beginning of the throw as well. Um, but what are some of the big things that you guys like to think about? Uh, we think about probably most the start. Uh, the start is like the most important thing. So if if the start is really good, I mean the rest of the throw is just gonna almost finish it itself. Mm -hmm. And if you like, if you can start with like a good press into the circle, <clears throat> wide right leg, and your left leg is not like pulling you into a circle, that's almost just. That's it just equals 60 meters plus like all the time almost. But right. it's really hard sometimes to try and throw far without pulling something right. out of line and something. So for me at least, I think about almost every practice is just trying to get that start right. And right now we are working on just like not pulling the left shoulder into the throw okay. and that's that's something i did really well in my 60 90 meter throw mm -hmm. uh, i i managed to like neutralize my left shoulder so instead of like always put, opening it up it was always just closed the whole time so it managed to let me like leave the discus uh, more behind mm -hmm. and just like give me a better torque like from a feed and up into the fingers right and coach, what do you, so when you're coaching it, um, what do you like, 
what do you look for? Like, how do you know his start is on and how do you know his start is off? Well, I, I just see the, if the balance is good or not. Right. Just by, just by watching him and sometimes just by hearing the throw. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can hear if it, if it is a good throw. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. The way the feet are going to sound through the, yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. So, um, so the way, the way I coach, I don't really have like a, like a set of rules like you have done mm -hmm. with your six pillars, um, which I think is really good in, in the way you explained how things are in your country. There are not so many, many quality, quality throwers and uh, coaches out there. Right. So, so you're trying to build that up with, with those steps. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I do, I just, I just watch the individuals, how they throw. And then I correct things mm -hmm. by number of different drills to, to correct it. And, um, and, and yeah, that's just how I, I work. Um, sometimes I have to say the same thing in 10 different ways Yeah, for the athlete to understand it. Right. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, so it's just a lot of work one on one. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I try to do. I try to spend time with the athlete when he's throwing. I, I just don't give him orders and then I go somewhere else. I'm there watching, taking videos. We watch the videos together right there. Mm -hmm. And not every, not all the time. I don't think that's good to do all the time. Sometimes you just have to throw and feel it. Right. But it's a lot of, lot of video work also right there on the spot. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's how I work. Gotcha. Mm. And, you know, and obviously back in your day and you're, I I'm, I'm 52. So I'm, I'm mm. just a little <laughs> younger than you, but um, obviously I, I had, you remember back in the day, it was like, you had to film and you had to go home and you had to watch it. You couldn't yeah, really yeah. watch it on. Yeah. And so it's so great to just have a phone yeah. and you can just be like, let me look at that again. Right. right? Yeah. And that, it's that's wonderful. a definite training advantage nowadays yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, um, what, since you mentioned drills, what would be, you know, you had really fast success and obviously that says a lot about your athletic ability, uh, that, that you could, you know, basically what in the second season throw 63 meters at your first year, you threw 52 meters with the 1.75, right. And that's a huge throw for the first year with a 1.75. I actually, <laughs> Through 53 something. Oh, was it 53? Okay. Yeah, but somehow it's not recorded anyway. <laughs> ah, okay. So yeah, even even more to the point. And so the next year you throw 63.50 and a series of 60 meter throws with the 2K as a, it's like you're the Icelandic Lawrence Okoye. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so coach doing that and, and to have that kind of success, what would, what would be like three drills that you uh, like your top three drills to kind of get a young thrower moving quickly and what specifically did good was, what was, what was the key for him? Well, he, he had the touch for the disc right away. So he had the, he had the long reads and, and really, uh, that 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 push to the implement. Okay. So, I, so I didn't have to worry about that. Uh, what I just had to have him do is, is like, like like the things you you're doing. You know, you press into your left leg and you take the right wide out and 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 put it down there. Okay. To the right. Okay. So a lot of those drill to start with just just to put pressure on the left leg mm -hmm. and take the right, have, have the same distance between the knees as you go around. Mm. Uh, that's how I explain it. Okay. And keep your toe out 
Okay. <laughs> and uh, and then a very important thing is never look down. Just right. Just look like you're walking in a normal way of walking. Right. Yeah. And then we're still working on this uh, with with Gunnar's head though. I think he has a lot of in, a lot of lot of uh, improvement to do with the way he manages his head as he throws. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's, he's still leading a little bit with his head at the finish. I okay. want him to relax a little bit more and get more, get more, um, a little bit more delay gotcha. from the upper body. Yeah. Right. So now, we still have, we still have some improvements to do. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Well, really at 25, or now you're 26, right? So you still are in your prime throwing years. So yeah, what? And obviously, yeah. I would imagine you know you want to. Paris has got to be the goal. And yeah. and uh, you know what do you think? Um, what do you think you're going to be able to throw? And I do have two more questions for you guys tech, about technique. There's two things I'll but but ultimately with where where do you think you can like what's your goal like is is the next goal just a just a pr or do you have in your head like is 70 meters the constant thought or you know how do you guys approach that next level i mean my goal is just always to throw as far as i possibly can mm -hmm. and just i mean i want to be able to throw constantly really far so i'll be able to join like diamond league meetings uh always in the finals at the big meets or uh, championships right. i mean everybody's looking for the podium right i think uh, a very few <laughs> discus throwers uh, at this level don't think about the podium it's like right. everybody's always thinking about the gold everything is about the gold but i mean it, it is possible i mean i know i can throw really far it just it just has to be a good day and we just are always working on the technique and we'll just see what happens i mean i'm strong enough to throw far now we'll just need to maybe do it there you go <laughs> so coach two things i got for, for you um the middle of the throw i find is always one of those tricky things to teach there's always the right there's the the subtle deceleration of the upper body so that you can obviously accelerate the lower body and create that torque when you land. What are, what are, how do you guys approach that aspect of the throw? Is there any like key marker points? Is there like, if you just had some general things, if you were talking at a, at a clinic, you know, what would be the advice you would give people on how that sequence kind of comes in? to play well in in my mind it it's you have to you have to get the right food quickly into the middle mm -hmm. um, as quickly as possible without you know any shortcuts it has to go the way go all the way but still be fast into the into the ground to get the support from the ground and as you're doing it left foot has to come really quickly into the block right and really you know really give the block block is so important mm -hmm. um, you cannot have a soft knee there you have to have it have the left leg pretty straight there okay um so i, I don't know if i'm answering your question um but you know get into the middle Feel feel the weight on your right leg. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you cannot you cannot turn your hip unless left is down. Um, it's gonna turn maybe you know just by being turning, but there's no power until the left foot comes down. Right. So so as you know, get the left foot as quickly down as possible and. I think it's the best block is if if your heel comes all the way down. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Yeah. So, what do you think? Um, and what do you think is the? 
uh, let you guys both ask from the coach and the athlete perspective, what do you think's the best part of your throw? And what do you think is the weakest part of your throw? And how much of that is, do you just kind of accept that, okay, well, this is how he's going to move. So maybe that isn't ever get to what we think is the most optimal, but we got to find the most optimal style that allows him to perform at his best. Best part of your throw, weakest part of your throw. And if there is a weak part of your throw, at what point, basically, coach, do you say, this is probably never going to be that classic type of movement? Like I have a thrower who's a, he's thrown 65, 48, and he can't get a wide right leg. And Robert Harding was out here at the Germans in back in 2000 and uh, I want to say it was 2018. They did a camp. I think it was Roberts last year. And um, so it was Daniel Jasinski and Robert's wife. And, you know, you had um, a couple other Germans. We all went out to dinner and we talked and he was saying, your thrower has a, you know, stiff right leg. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> There's like, but I've just ne he's never going to have that big, beautiful, big, wide leg. He's got a little bit of a tighter, but it still goes wide. He's got the right path, but he doesn't have a, a real dynamic sweep. So I, at a certain point, had to say, well, I just have to focus on what, what's going to make him. And he's about 6'3", so I forget what that is in centimeters. And he weighs 100 and, uh, well, let's see, what is he, baby? He's under 120. He's probably about you know, 118 in that range is kilos. So, so that being said, best part of your throw, weakest part of your throw, what do you think? What do you think coach? Cause that'll be, I'm sure it's probably the same viewpoint since you're working together all the time, but maybe, maybe it's a little different. So go ahead. Well, if I can start, <laughs> um, I, I think, like I said earlier, I think Gwyneth can improve in, in holding his, his, his eyes back. Okay. Just before the throw. Okay. And therefore get a stronger hit and a, a bigger pull on okay. the on the disc. So so this is what we're talking about and and working on. Uh, it's um it's a long way to correct that. Mm -hmm. It's because um so many throwers tend to lead with their with their head, right? And and uh, it's hard to correct. So so it's uh it's uh you have to just be patient and work on it. Okay. So that, that that's the key. I, everything else is quite good for Guini. Um, every year he's getting stronger. Um, he throws a ton of throws. Um, between 10 and 15,000 throws every year. Wow. So even, even with his growing injury and, and um, um, probably 70% of that is into a net, mm. which, is, which is, you know, also not so good all the time. Gotcha. Uh, we need to go more for training camps. Gotcha. Throw in the sun. Go to, gotcha. to Arizona, maybe. <laughs> yes, you got to. Arizona is always good right now. Beautiful for the yeah. next two months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this is my my view of. Okay. What can be improved? Yeah, for me it would be probably similar. It's uh, I would say my best part is probably the beginning because that's uh, the thing we've uh, mostly worked on, like during my mm. career in discus throw. And my worst is probably, yeah, just like the whole middle section, kind of. So you feel like the head, the head's turning too much around when you're coming around? Is that what you guys? Yeah, think? the head's pulling too much and just maybe not turning strong enough on the right. And, yeah. you know, it's always, you can always turn more and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And faster. Yeah, right. And faster. <laughs> and... <laughs> Okay, so um, let's do this. Stats. Everybody always wants to know, okay, what kind of weight room numbers? And I see your, some of your, your Instagram posts, and you always look like you're putting up a ton of weight. 
So what, <laughs> what's your, what's your clean, your snatch, like your jerk or your overhead press, um, bench press, everybody, Americans love the bench press. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, go ahead shoot. What are, what are the numbers? Uh, my clean is uh, 182.5 kilos right now. Uh, it was 180 for like four years, and I just managed to do a 2.5 kilo PR right now. <laughs> okay, is it but 400 pounds? Is it? It's 402, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah. Uh, and my, I mean, I was I was going for 192, but. I pulled it high enough, but I didn't catch it, so it was just high pull. Uh, yeah. My bench is 235 kilos. Okay. I did that after all my attempts of clean, so it was really hard. Okay. That, that's, <laughs> that's about 500? Yeah, 500 is 227 kilos, so this is almost 10 kilos. It's yeah. 520 yeah, that, maybe. That's a big, that's big. My uh, squat is 300 kilos. I, did, wow. I finally managed to max out my squat uh, in December. Uh, I hadn't been able to do it just because of you know injuries, always a little bit something there and there. Okay. Then uh, my what did I, my my snatch is 145 kilos power snatch uh, or power, some power something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's all power. Uh, it, yeah, <laughs> just just power overhead bar lift, <laughs> and uh, I know what I left. My deadlift is three ten kilos, three hundred and ten. Yeah. Wow. Uh, my jerk is two hundred kilos, and I did that. I think two thousand seventeen. I'm not sure. I, then I I mean a little bit injured always in my left shoulder, mm. but it doesn't bother me in anything except overhead presses and jerks and so i just don't <laughs> do it that much so okay gotcha <laughs> and it doesn't matter and also the ceiling in our weight room uh, it's just it's not high enough for for jerks but okay. they are they are building a little bit uh, lower platform right now so maybe i'll be jerking <laughs> again in a little bit maybe some crazy numbers but right. i don't know <laughs> yeah exactly so the strength is obviously there. Yeah. And now, the, what do you call it? The this push presses like uh -huh. people are doing now. I've been doing a little bit of them uh, during the last. Yeah, since last fall, I think I went like one hundred seventy-five kilos, maybe. In that, I'm not sure. I think, I mean, I didn't like build up to it. I just like I was just having fun. Gotcha. And, somehow ended up doing 175 okay <laughs> damn um okay so what about vertical like your vertical jump do you know where that's at uh actually uh it was in november last year it was 51 centimeter uh, without arm swing so it's just a uh, counter movement jump with your hands on your hips okay so it's 51 centimeters. Uh, and that was before I started uh, doing plyometrics during training. So I, I, my plan is to go back to my college to check out the, the jump mat and see if uh, the centimeters have changed. Okay. <laughs> so that's just with your hands at your hips. So it's just like a down and jump. So you don't get the... Yeah. Okay. No. It, no have you, have you ever... Have you, oh, so they don't... Have you ever tested with your arms? Uh, no, I mean, I did something when I started. I think P Peter was always making us jump something, <laughs> and we just like reached up, reached up to yeah. a wall with some chalk, and then we just jumped up, touched it, and we just measured it like that. And I think I did 73 centimeters, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. all right, yeah, that, because that, that makes it that makes a big difference, yeah, another. Yeah, Two thousand and fourteen, I think, or thirteen, okay. maybe. <laughs> that, back when you were maybe only one hundred and thirty-five kilos or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I started, I was actually one hundred and twenty kilos, and then I had to lose some weight because I mean I was not 
120 kilos strong when I started. So I lost 17 kilos. I went down to 103. Oh, wow. During like an eight month span. I mean, I was still playing golf. I mean, I was practicing golf every day. So it wasn't really hard. It was just like eat one bowl of cereal instead of three and <laughs> just select some stuff like that. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay. So let's see. Um, uh, so I'm trying to think if there now, generally I had one more category. I always like to talk about just mental focus. So from a coaching standpoint, and, I, and you kind of mentioned Peter earlier on kind of like, obviously, you know, just, getting getting the athlete prepared and comfortable and different things like that but how how do you guys approach things from a mental perspective um well i think i try to teach uh, all my athletes to be prepared mm -hmm. to have everything you need in the back right so so situation on the field where you ever go to compete doesn't surprise you. You have, you have a towel, you have the chalk, you have the knee wraps, you have everything to manage through the competition. You have a rain gear. You, you have two sets of throwing pair, shoes pair. Right. Uh, even though, you know, uh, this is, this is one thing, you know, always be prepared. You don't have mm -hmm. to, rely on others right you know and then just believe in yourself and believe you can throw far try to right. say you know stay positive and if you have a bad day try to build them up you know with some positive things to say you know sure. there's always something good to to get from even even from a lousy training session right but yeah you, the next one is going to be better. <laughs> yeah, for sure, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what about you, Guni? Uh, yeah, for me, I just think it's uh, really important to, like, believe you can throw far, to, I mean, throw further. And like, just, like, believe in yourself. It's like when you start having doubts and stuff like that, that's, like, usually when you're going to start to have a really bad training weeks. <laughs> yeah for sure and just like then you just i don't uh, you just have to like get angry and just go hard at like maybe one practice and just see that disc fly a little bit further maybe just over that 60 meter mark and just like oh yeah i remember i, I still can't throw far or something like that just to like right to get your confidence back up but yeah you just always have to like believe in yourself in almost like everything you do. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> right. And, you know, you've mentioned it a couple of times and, and I find that this is the case. You, you've mentioned like your training throws are always slightly shorter than your competition throws. Right. And I've, yeah. I've always found that with most of my athletes that, that I know if they're throwing, you know, if one, one guy's throwing 60 meters in training, then I know he's good for, he's going to go easily 62, 63. You know what I mean? And if I see him mm -hmm. throw 62, it's like, okay, he's, he's ready to start hitting some big throws. Um, and, and would you say that's the case for you guys too? Most of your training throws, are you, are you, you know? Yeah. You're yeah, not definitely. Hitting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like my training PP is 67 meters, I think almost on the spot. And that was just in some, that was a crazy wind here in Iceland. And it was just like, it was snowing and just a crazy wind. And we were just throwing, having fun. The disc went just like right on the side and just blew somewhere. And, and then I had like last year in Vecchio, I threw a training PB of 66.80. And that was like the only throw I can almost compare to my Icelandic record throw. That was just like really good, but too bad I couldn't like replicate it during a meet. Right. The, 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 always the challenge, right? Quick questions like the speed round on personal interests, right? Cause you train all the time. So I'm going to do, we do day in the life. So what's a day in the life? Like what's a typical day for you? Well, if I start, I am, uh, I am, uh, uh, policeman here in Reykjavik. Okay. So that's what I do 100%. 
and then I coach on the side. Okay. So uh, not a whole lot of time left. I bet, yeah. Um, but uh, I like to travel and uh, actually go into Boston tomorrow. <laughs> oh, a few yeah, days. That's relaxing. right. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's how my my day days are: work and and coaching. Gotcha. So pretty full. And what about? So now as a young thrower, you're in college and tell me, I'll go through the fast ones, movies, best place to eat in Reykjavik, all that kind of stuff. Um, go ahead. What's a day in the life? Uh, for me, it was just uh, maybe uh, go to class for a little bit, study a little bit, play some Call of Duty, <laughs> go training. <laughs> and if, if it is not snowing and then I would probably go and try to maybe go golf a little bit or disc golf a little bit. That's also really fun. That's okay. like two of my hobbies. So very cool. And uh, how good of a golfer are you? Coach said you're pretty good. Uh, right now my handicap is two. Okay. So I think I'm. I'm. I would say I'm uh, above average good golfer. And also above average in short distance. Okay, <laughs> I bet. TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so uh, we always say so. You you obviously because you train hard and throwing is um, there's a certain fun to throwing, but it's a lot of work, right? It, it there's a there's a weird enjoyment to throwing, right? <laughs> Everybody, yeah. but it's it's definitely hard work. So. You got to have some fun on the side. So we always say, okay, what's your favorite movie? Step Brothers. Step Brothers? <laughs> nice. Okay. The Rock. The, the Rock. Okay. Favorite food? And pizza. Then pizza. Okay. And coach, what do you think? What's your favorite? Good steak. A good, good steak. steak. Okay. Yeah. And what's the, what's yeah. the best... What's the best place to eat in Reykjavik? Well, it's it's, it's in my place. It's, it's my home because my wife is an excellent cook. That was a good answer, <laughs> Coach. Yeah, <laughs> I would probably say similar. I mean, I live at home with my parents, and uh, it's almost we eat steaks here like three out of seven days a week, almost. Usually, nice. some kind of like young horse meat. So that's just crazy good. And there's just always, it's uh, kind of just better than going out and pay some crazy high amount for something that's not even comparable to what I'm eating at home. Okay. For way cheaper. Tacos or chicken wings? Uh, chicken wings for me all day. Yeah, same here. Okay. Um, let's see. Favorite pump up song. <laughs> uh, for me it's been a while now i mean i'm always rotating some songs but okay. i would say when i'm lifting it would be heaviest matter in the universe by kojira okay and it has to be the live version okay the live version <laughs> yeah and then when i'm throwing i my favorite pop-up song right now and has been during the fall is uh, Harvest of Sorrow by Metallica, hmm. live at Tusino Airfield in Moscow, 91. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Isn't that the one that they said there was like a million people there to watch? Or yeah, 1.6. Yeah, jeez. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a lot, a lot of those songs. Okay. Coach, now you're a little older. So back in the day when I would throw, <laughs> right, I would like to go classic rock back when i was so this is like you know early yeah. early 90s so i would go with uh black sabbath Paran mm. paranoid was my pump up song to get ready for meets <laughs> what about you coach <laughs> well uh, like most most classic songs with um deep purple okay good so uh it's hard to choose between them all but yeah <laughs> deep purple okay <laughs> All right. Um, 
And just generally, what advice would you guys give for young coaches and young throwers? Uh, just believe in yourself in both ways. Just uh, for coaches, uh, read articles. I mean, there's a lot of articles. I'm doing my, I'm doing my Bachelor of Science uh, project now, and I mean, there's a ton of articles about like what part of the throw is like maybe more important than another. It's like mm -hmm. so you don't like screw up. Like, don't stay in the air for too long. Just, like, do a little bit of research and just believe in what you're coaching and believe in the process. I mean, it, it takes a while to master the spin. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm a, maybe I'm a good discus thrower, but uh, I really suck spinning with a shot put. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I get lost. I mean, I get dizzy when I just put the shot to my neck. So, it just, it takes, a, it takes time. And, Maybe it takes some months or even a year before you start seeing a progress, and then it just comes really quick, usually. Right. Okay. Coach, what about you? Yeah, what I say here in Iceland, because we are so few, like uh, you guys are, you know, it's one to every 1,000. Right. So <laughs> so when we when we get some promising throw, throwers here, I, I tell them, try to have a long career you're right keep keep at it don't quit don't quit just keep going you're gonna throw far you know yeah. it, it might take a long time to build up but it will happen yeah that's uh i always say to my guys the, the hard work's always going to pay off it just pays off yeah. at a different rate for everybody yeah 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 and also it's like when you're beginning you just need that like amount of throws if it's a thousand or two thousand throws before you may like realize realize what you're doing like right oh yeah so this is what you're talking about going or all right here or looking back it's like it takes a while being comfortable in the circle yeah for sure i would agree okay yeah. great but hey thanks again i appreciate it. i know it's late and i appreciate you guys meeting up with me and i wish you guys the best i hope to see you throwing super far this year and uh you know see if you can push that national record up a little bit more <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay bye-bye okay, guys bye -bye. take care